can I ask you to introduce yourself in a few words and what your company does in general terms? Yes, uh, my name is Kuller Marsi and I'm the CEO of uh, company Milram Robotics. And Milram Robotics is the leading developer and manufacturer of robotic systems for both for defense and uh, commercial domain. And we are very well known by our product called Timis, which is meant for the uh, dismounted troops or support of dismounted troops. And now we have taken another step into the direction of new uh, robotic products. All right. What is your revolutionary concept called Type X? And what is the philosophy uh, behind its development? Uh, the philosophy is uh, pretty much the same as behind the development of the smaller vehicle teams. So the main idea and the main uh, purpose is to bring soldiers out of the harm's way and to give more uh, capable tools to the uh, military units. So Type X uh, actually is a robotic vehicle which is meant to support mechanized units. If a Temis as a small vehicle is for the light infantry or for the dismounted troops, then Type X is by its design meant to support the infantry fighting vehicles, main battle tanks, and to be used in the same capacity as uh, those provide the uh, firepower. And it's uh, actually today we are beyond the concept. That means that we are uh, assembling the mm -hmm. prototype and the first uh, operational, not operational, but first dynamic test will be conducted already by the end of the summer. All right. What common elements might there be with the Temis in terms of functionality? Well, one very clear commonality are the intelligent functions. So both the Temis and the Typex are designed to be autonomously navigated uh, vehicles. So clearly, it's always clear that the weapon systems will always be used by uh, human operators and controlled by human operators. But the mobility part of the vehicle, it has to be as intelligent and autonomous as possible. Another philosophy which is uh, very much the same and which is the borderline or which is the, uh, so to say, underlining our activities is the modularity. So we bring in the similar uh, way of modularity into the type pack, which starts with uh, very easy to integrate different pay payloads and extends to the modular design in terms of the line replacement units. So for example, changing the sensor uh, kit is as simple as taking one drawer out and uh, replacing it with, with another drawer, literally. So modularity is, uh, is certainly another field. And third and foremost is, of course, as well, the hybrid electric drive and the power uh, uh, management system. So we have learned with Timis a lot how to utilize the electric, electric vehicle in combination with a uh, diesel generator or in functionality of serious hybrid and now we bring it to the next level where we use it for the large vehicle where the uh, peak power are really really high and top speed is up to 80 kilometers per hour that's it how can you say that type x would be simultaneously as efficient if not more as a current ifv and much cheaper hopefully well, actually, it's, um, the answer is rather simple. The protecting the humans inside vehicles is very costly. So if we do the purpose-built design for the unmanned vehicle, we can, first of all, approach the armoring totally differently. We don't need to care about the mobility, but we need to care about the uh, mission-critical systems. In current case, the weapon system and firing functionality. That means that we can uh, reduce the uh, reduce the armoring uh, significantly, which reduces the, the uh, weight of the vehicle significantly. So if we compare it with a uh, normal fighting vehicle, then it's three times uh, lighter. So if uh, Type X is 12 ton, then normally normally uh, infantry fighting vehicle is around 35 to 40 plus tons already. So. Uh, the cost saving will come from two aspects. One is that the 
need lower protection level uh, for the uh, mobility part, and that makes it uh, cheaper. And another uh, saving is that if we have lighter vehicle, we have a smaller power pack, we have smaller suspension system, we have uh, smaller tracks, we have everything reduced in size. And you, if you reduce it in size, you reduce it uh, cost-wise as well. But still, uh, with lighter vehicle, what we keep is the uh, very highly power mobility uh, vehicle, which is very mobile on difficult terrain and providing the same type of firepower or even better if we integrate if we integrate instead 30 millimeter turret to 50 millimeter turret then it can provide even better firepower on the uh, battlefield because indeed as you say i mean with an somehow 12 ton total weight it's surprising and enables the vehicle to reach an incredible mobility and regarding uh, the assistance technical assistance required to maintain such a vehicle in operation. So can you comment a little bit on logistical aspects? Uh, yes, of course. I don't know, is uh, our uh, chief engineer's worker been able to join as well, or uh, if not? I don't see him right now on the screen, but maybe uh, we can do something, or you just switch i mean the the camera i don't know whether he is in another place or just uh, sitting uh, with you he's in uh, he's in sweden he can see us but he can't but we can't see him so interesting ah. uh, but maybe i will cover i will cover that topic yes. myself uh, shortly as well and uh, about the mobility uh, what we have kept in mind uh, very much as well is the air transportability and airlift so uh, the vehicle height is uh, designed in a manner or kept in, in a manner that it can be uh, air dropped with parachute. So the height of the vehicle is uh, below 2.2 meters, which allows it uh, to uh, drop it from the, uh, from the C-130 with parachute. Obviously, uh, it can be uh, uh, transported uh, underslung uh, of the helicopter and it can fit in the uh, really large uh, transport uh, helicopters as well. So we have kept in mind the NATO requirements of the uh, mobility from uh, tactical as well as from strategic perspective. And clearly uh, it's uh, well obvious that if you have lighter vehicle, then the logistic costs uh, and logistic uh, means will be more simplified and uh, more uh, flexible as well for these kind of uh, systems. But uh, as well, it's uh, kept in mind that in a longer future, you don't need the uh, control vehicle or the, um, yes, the control vehicle and uh, operators so close by to the uh, Type X type of the uh, robotic combat vehicle, and you can drop them uh, off to the uh, battlefield and control them uh, from uh, longer distance like using the SATCOM for the uh, operations and the uh, communication. You could even use some drones, I mean, as an interface from the control station and mm. the uh, Type X. Last but not least, what potential customers, if any, does Milrem already target or has in mind? Well, uh, first of all, uh, yes, there is one uh, initial or key customer who is uh, investing into this development as well. Unfortunately, I'm not uh, authorized to uh, tell anything more about that. But uh, on top of that, obviously, uh, we see that lots of robotics programs and robotic and autonomous system programs are starting around the world, like uh, certainly US and US Army is one of the forerunners, but we have excellent programs uh, upcoming in uh, Europe, in UK, in Netherlands, in France as well. So I would say that uh, it's suitable for all the customers who use today infantry fighting vehicles and who want to either uh, additional firepower to these infantry fighting vehicles or want to replace with robotic vehicles some part of these infantry fighting vehicles and who are really innovative in, in terms of the robotics and autonomous systems. So clearly our uh, home market is uh, Europe and uh, that's why we have kept in mind NATO regulation and NATO standards in the development as well, but uh, otherwise it's the rest of the world as well. So. Excellent. And to conclude, 
can we say that for sure? We shall see an operational prototype by the end of this summer and rejoice to see a revolutionary machine uh, going on tracks. Yes, absolutely. So actually, we have a uh, first mock-up vehicle already ready in our uh, manufacturing site. And we were supposed to demonstrate it at the Eurocentery, but uh, we all know what happened with Eurocentery, unfortunately. But the operational prototype is ready by the end of the summer, and uh, we will start with dynamic tests. So this is now a question that we shall insert in your interview higher. Can you comment a little bit on the armor and the armament? Yes, on the armor, actually, uh, the uh, first vehicle is targeting that the mission critical systems as the firing and the weapon system is protected up to the level four. And the rest of the uh, mobility chassis is only on the level one because, well, main function of this uh, robotic combat vehicle is to bring the firepower to the battlefield and to maintain the extreme mobility. The armament uh, perspective, uh, the uh, standard configuration will have a 30 millimeter uh, uh, turret uh, with uh, Mark 44 uh, parallel and as well additionally some anti-tank uh, missile systems. But we foresee that it's upgradable up to the uh, 50 millimeter turret uh, in uh, next iterations. All right, thank you very much. I think we've got all. Any comments you would like to add to your presentation? I think uh, you had excellent questions and covered everything which is really crucial and uh, important. So I don't, I don't have anything uh, important to add, to add. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thank we you.